So how do you properly calculate a fee rate? Types of fees vary, such as service fees and regulatory fees, some of which are statutorily regulated. For all fees, the GFOA recommends considering mm. applicable federal and state laws, adopting formal policies articulating pricing factors, Utah requires annual fee schedules be adopted by the governing body, calculating the full cost, both direct and indirect costs, of providing the service. This includes operations and maintenance, or O&M, overhead, and charges for the use of capital facilities. Examples of overhead costs include payroll processing, accounting services, computer usage, and other central administrative services. Mm -hmm. Periodically mm -hmm. reviewing and updating rates based on factors like inflation, adequacy of cost recovery, use of services, and the competitiveness of current rates. Performing forecasts to anticipate future costs. Excel can easily do this. You can also use R, open source statistical analysis software. And providing the public fee information and involving them in the fee setting process. Utah's Open and Public Meetings Act and other fee setting statutes require the public's involvement in establishing or increasing fee rates. The State Compliance Audit Guide includes a procedure for external mm. auditors to assure that a reasonable methodology was used to calculate fee rates. Where does this idea come from? The Utah Supreme Court ruled that, to be a legitimate fee for service, the amount charged must bear a reasonable relationship to the services provided, the benefits received, or a need created by those who must actually pay the fee. And a regulatory fee must bear some reasonable relationship to the cost of the thing said to justify its imposition. In this instance, the costs of regulating the industry that pays the surcharge. Let's dive into a common example, calculating a culinary water service fee. First, what are the relevant laws? The Safe Drinking Water Act is the federal law that empowers the EPA to enforce rules that must be met by each public water system. By agreement with the EPA, the Utah Division of Drinking Water administers this federal law in Utah. The Utah Safe Drinking Water Act, a state law, empowers the Utah Drinking Water Board to enact rules for water systems. State administrative rules include drinking water standards, monitoring, reporting, and record maintenance, certification of operators and backflow technicians, compliance determinations and enforcement, facility construction design and operation, source protection management, financial assistance programs, and capacity assessment. Since 2016, state law requires all retail water providers to establish an increasing block rate structure for culinary water. This law affects how our example culinary water fee can be assessed. Now that we're aware of the rules, which affect costs and how charges may be assessed, we can calculate a fee rate. Note uh -huh. that these are general steps intended to provide you a baseline for what a reasonable methodology is. They're not comprehensive. First, determine your fixed costs. These are the monthly system costs even if you don't pump, treat, or sell a single drop of water. Fixed costs include debt service on construction loans, any required debt service reserves, and funding of financial reserves necessary for basic and emergency system maintenance. They also include billing and collection, insurance, and testing costs. Second, determine your variable costs. These change from month to month depending on how much water you pump, treat, and sell. Variable costs include costs for operating your system, such as salaries, chemicals, utilities, and repairs. Third, determine monthly fixed cost per customer. Divide monthly fixed costs by total number of customers. Fourth, determine monthly variable costs per 1,000 gallons per customer. Divide total monthly variable costs by the total average customer water use, divided by 1,000. Fifth, calculate the total monthly charge per customer. Monthly fixed cost per customer plus monthly variable cost per 1,000 gallons per customer. Now, this was a simplified single block rate example, which didn't include the increasing block rates required in Utah, possible revenue bond covenant requirements, shifting a greater portion of cost to larger commercial users versus low income or fixed income users, and many other considerations. However, ideally, this quick math helped you view how a system's rate structure is designed with a reasonable methodology to recover fixed and variable costs. Remember, a reasonable methodology is more than let's just add $3 to every bill, or I've got a gut feeling approach. Huh? A reasonable methodology shows how the service fee rate recovers the service's costs.